Hey guys, this is Tiffany, and I'm actually a little behind, so I apologize for the delay, but I'm just now getting to episode 3 and 4 of Star Trek Discovery, so we'll start with 3 first, which is called Context is for Kings, and I was a little hesitant to watch more because I, uh, from friends and from uh, people I respect their opinions, they're like, oh, this is awful, this is a horrible series, and you shouldn't watch it, but finally I was like, well, I feel like I should determine that for myself. So I did watch it, and uh, Context is for Kings is uh, episode three, and this is our really our first glance at uh, Jason Isaacs as the the captain. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about that because he plays such a good villain uh, with uh, like Lucius Malfoy, obviously, and Harry Potter. So um, you know, and uh, if you've ever seen him in the Patriot, it's whew, you know he he always plays a good bad guy. So I wasn't sure how I felt about him being the captain. So. Um, but yeah, so it shows Michael in the prison transport, and the the they're they're like redirected on a different uh, path, um, and they are almost lost uh, out there. But the USS Discovery saves them. Uh, the and as they're saved, I mean, you you notice instantly. Of course, the prisoners are ostracized. And uh, the fellow prisoners actually try to take out Michael, but she uses her Vulcan training and her martial arts capabilities to make sure that they don't and take them out instead. Uh, we see a lot of familiar faces from the uh, USS Shinjo. Uh, we see like a uh, Saru. Uh, we see, you know, a lot of th those crew members that she worked with. So it it's. That dynamic is very interesting because obviously to them that she's an unwelcome face so it's it's you know definitely um, you know kind of putting salt in that wound I'm sure for her as well as uh, kind of difficult to just even face them at this point so uh, then we finally see Jason Isaacs and I mean uh, he is Captain Gabriel Lorca uh, and immediately he comes off as very kind of mysterious and just very almost dark. Um, uh, we see him at like this desk or something uh, in a room and it looks like he has like a triple look-alike on his desk which I thought was interesting. Um, and he has a big thing of fortune cookies like a big bowl so it's like okay does he believe in like you know, uh, good fortune or bad fortune or zen or who knows. I mean, I, I have no idea. And uh, Michael realizes that her transport changed directions. There was no call for her to change facilities. So obviously someone was working behind the scenes. And he quickly admits that he wants Michael to work and put her to work on, on board. Um, and of course she's she wants to carry out her penance she wants to do her time and move on uh, because she, you know that's her her code of conduct her uh, code of honor even maybe if you will so um, cadet Sylvia Tilly is her roommate and we find out you know she's one of those really nice people but that cares too much about what people think about her uh, kind of has a little bit of a social awkwardness, obviously, um, but very endearing. And Michael, you can see, is like, ah, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> She's not too thrilled, obviously. So um, the ship goes on black alert, and when this happens, like these, you see these particles seem to raise from like the uh, the windowsill and from like the like the countertops or whatever you want to call them just like and they seem to form like actual matter in the air like a almost like a liquid uh, I don't know molecular form I don't know how to describe it it's just very interesting to see almost like raindrops that are midair so and just kind of paused in midair so um, it's kind of odd because she runs into first officer Saru and learns that he is the first officer of this vessel and uh, you see his threat ganglia and all that stuff which is interesting um she 
goes and investigates the labs after noticing the the uh, this kind of reaction whenever it went on black alert and is immediately suspicious because uh, I mean I guess she almost recognizes that they're like spore like or um, something unusual so she does go to the labs and uh, they they're putting her to work there around the uh, engineering and labs system anyways so she ends up stealing her roommate saliva to break in because she's not she thinks that there's some sort of sinister you know uh, undertone or reason that these labs are only able to be accessed by one person whereas in her experience with Starfleet you know they've been open to any of the the officers or crew members on board um, she learned I mean they also have the uh, lieutenant is the one who can access these labs and he's been talking with his friend on the USS Glenn about this kind of transportation or uh, upgrading the way that they travel in hyperspace and unfortunately he finds out that the USS Glenn is lost in battle and or not battle but because of uh, it looks like a battle but they're not really quite sure what has happened because there's no like outer markings or anything wrong on the outside all they know is that they are dead so they form a team uh, Michael included she follows the lieutenant with some others and uh, they go on board the the USS Glenn and they quickly find that these uh, crew members look like they have been mauled by a large beast or like some sort of a wild animal like a, almost like a lion or, or something like that or or a, like a I don't even know what else like a just a huge almost like a grim of some kind so um, you know she has experience with a ship um, and knows how the layout is so very quickly you see that there is something lurking in the dark and it's you know been lashing out and attacking people um, and they obviously want to they go to the lab that was on the USS Glenn and take uh, what what technology they can find and uh, they uh, they also like he takes uh, all the information on the the hyperspace uh, like organic propulsion system which we find out later is what they were working on and takes it back to the shuttle and they're trying to escape w while keeping the monster at bay so uh, Michael uh, uses her ingenuity to crawl up into the the uh, vents and into the the ceiling and uh, as and quotes Alice in Wonderland, you know, crawling through like the rabbit hole, so to speak, um, as she does so. So it's it's interesting to have that kind of literature reference here. Uh, the fact that this this person that we've kind of always, you know, we've only seen be kind of straight faced and pretty logical as would be a Vulcan about everything, has read and uh, can quote Alice in Wonderland and uh, uses it in. Uh, a situation like this, a sticky situation. So, um, it, what I also found interesting is that Saru vouched for her. He actually said that she is the smartest officer he's ever known. So, my goodness, that that is a heck of a compliment coming from First Officer Saru. So, um, but yeah, we learned that they are uh, mycelium, I think, spores. I think that's right that have been uh, used to create and run this organic propulsion system and basically the idea is you can go anywhere and be gone in an instant like you can appear uh, in a certain area like behind a, a ship for example like Klingon or um, and you know attack and have that vantage point of attack and be gone in an instant before they even know you're you're there and gone so um, they also you find out learn that they have uh, one of the officers has 
like transported or beamed that what what we perceive as a monster onto the ship with them onto the USS Discovery and that's how it ends as you see Jason Isaacs looking at this like a almost like a, a prison a cage and uh, the monster is, is there and trying to get out and like attack the force field almost uh, that's keeping him inside so oh man so of course at this point we're thinking you know he has there's some sort of sinister plot here behind not only this organic propulsion system but behind this him you know getting this creature um for good or for for bad who knows better or worse but uh wow <laughs> this is i mean to have this as the introduction to him as a as a captain i, I really don't know what to think um, you know, again, he's very he's very dark compared to what I, what we're used to in in Star Trek. I mean, we've had captains, of course, just like with Doctor Who, the doctors sometimes go dark. Same thing with Star Trek. You know, sometimes the captains go to a, a darker place uh, depending on what they're encountering. So, but to see him start out that way, it makes you it makes me definitely wonder about his history and what he's been through and his like he comes off to me as like a war. A veteran, uh, almost like a, an, an officer of war who has seen the worst circumstances and gone on to tell the tale and probably seen death and destruction um, and who knows what else. So it's, it's very interesting because he obviously, um, even given that Michael is a well-known mutineer, he is, you know, he wants someone with kind of like that, you know, um, with her attitude and her history to be a part of this uh, crew and to be in uh, a member of the ship so how that's going to work out who knows but yeah so far it's it's definitely interesting so but yeah uh that is the my review and kind of reaction to the context is for kings episode uh, I will definitely keep reviewing this as well as the Orville and Ruby that just came out today. Ah! And uh, I will also be reviewing Walking Dead when it comes back out uh, and Stranger Things 2. Um, we've already reviewed Game of Thrones and we will continue to do so. Uh, we have so many unboxings, Loot Crate, Loot Anime, Owl Crate, uh, Scotch Botch, Japanese Snacks. We have, I have Anime Bento coming, which is new. I have uh, a Fandom Crate, which is a random fandom. Haha, <laughs> that rhymes. Every month, and uh, you don't know what it's going to be, but the whole box is that fandom. And I know one month recently they had Zelda, so that's I'm intrigued to see what that's going to be and uh, as well as some other unboxings as and uh, we'll be doing gaming we'll be doing a lot of uh, behind the scenes and uh, like FX makeup uh, we'll have some videos on that we'll have um, some some more giveaways we have a destiny 2 giveaway going on right now so if you haven't already check out the video on how you can win a copy of destiny 2 Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I, I really appreciate that. And uh, you can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash the nerdettes. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy what you see and let us know what else you'd like to see. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you later. Bye.